passage is helping students in the like if you if you don't have money or if you have a limited money yeah. uh, they will fund you for canada education canada is much more similar to that than okay. you just show up and everything is going to be fine so what i disagree with is the sentiment that canada is good or canada is bad mm -hmm. canada is both if you know how to select the right pathway right i don't i don't think there's ever been a better time to come to canada to be honest how yeah. you can help indian students can you tell me or explain me something on that the the two cent summary is basically the canadian government's just trying to align newcomer populations okay. with the areas in Canada where there are high amount of jobs. Okay. They're going to schools and programs that have no chance of success mm -hmm. and the, the earning potential of those jobs here and in Africa versus Canada is, is so different it's so hard to even explain yes. to people. Only the one area that's not very plentiful for jobs is the like the basic simple business programs. Yeah, simple business program, yes. Uh, I think lots of students are in this program right now in Canada and I yeah. think they are struggling a lot. Hey guys, today we have an amazing guest on our podcast, Bobby Green. He is one of the good friends during uh, Apply Board time. And right now he is heading the Chief Growth Officer in the Passage. Passage is the based or you can say is the amazing organization based in Canada. And is also a startup over there. Yep. And Passage is helping students in the, like if you, if you don't have money or if you have a limited money, yep. uh, they will fund you for Canada education. That means like it sounds very uh, uh, like suspicious for you, like how anyone can help you for the loans or for scholarship or funding. But yeah, that's true. Passage is the one based in Canada, having an amazing startup. Martin is also founder of this particular company. Yep. And uh, he, they are providing uh, lots of scholarships, also loans for the students who are coming from the, you can say rural area or something like that. And they are really looking to make a changes in the education world. Okay. So we have a Bobby Green. Thank you, Bobby, on this podcast. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's great to be here. Yes. And uh, can you tell me a little bit about Passage, like uh, what the Passage do and how you are helping the people or how you are helping the students? Yeah, sure. Let me start off with what we do and then maybe some of the core philosophies yes. we've talked about. Sure. So what Passage is doing, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, however long it takes, we want to make sure that there's never a student on this planet that is stuck from doing something bigger and better because they don't have money. Simple okay. as that. So I don't care right now if you're in Ahmedabad or you're somewhere else in India, or maybe you're in Ivory Coast or the DRC or somewhere else, yes. right? Mm -hmm. If you're a talented, honest, hardworking student, you should always be able to do something bigger with your life. Right, right. Um, so we have a very specific philosophy of how we think that is possible. Yes. And that is basically by making sure that Passage and the student are in the same boat. Okay. So we made sure that the company works. So if a student does well, I'll do well. Mm -hmm. But if there's any situation where a student doesn't do amazing, mm -hmm. I'm going to feel the pain just like they do. Yes, that's true. I think this is the only way to build the brand of trust that's required mm -hmm. to communicate with students all over India, but Africa and South America okay. and all these other places. Right. So we are going to do it by being better mm -hmm. and by making sure that we're very good at getting students to be successful. Right. Okay, great. And can you tell me like how you are helping the students means like what product you have built to help the students like yeah. uh, I, I, I like during our conversation you told that you have helped lots of students from Afghan and lots of other countries yeah. to move them into Canada but talented students only yes. Canadian students right how yeah. you can help Indian students can you tell me or explain me something on that yeah exactly so so right now there's a lot of changes over the last year. And to a lot of people, it feels scary and uncertain, yes. and they don't know how to know what's going to happen Happen's. in the future. And I can definitely empathize with why that's hard. For, for me as a Canadian, I think it's much more straightforward. Uh -huh. the, the two cents summary is basically the Canadian government's just trying to align newcomer populations okay. with the areas in Canada where there are high amount of jobs. Okay. So what we were talking about earlier is Canada is very similar to India. I think India. when I say this to people, they immediately get it. Yes. There are paths that I can talk to any Indian and say, you'll know that your son or daughter will be successful if you take this path. Right. If you end up at IIT, you're probably going to be fine. Probably fine, yes. Right? Canada is much more similar to that than okay. you just show up and everything is going to be fine. Okay. So what I disagree with is the sentiment that Canada is good or Canada is bad. 
-huh. Canada is both. Yeah, India Canada is both. Is both. Yeah. Right. All countries is uh, have a dark side and the positive side. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. If you know how to select the right pathway, right path. I don't. I don't think there's ever been a better time to come right to Canada. Happen. To be honest. Yes. I think the problem is more students have unfortunately been led down the wrong path. Right. They're going to schools and programs that have no chance of success. Right. And then we we shouldn't be surprised that now they're angry. Angry. And yes. they're telling their friends, right? Yeah. So to me, I don't have a job. Right? Yes. So to me, my job is very simple. I need to use my skills in, in data and software to show people the right paths. Right, right. And if we can do that, then we can get students successful. And then over time, students will understand that there's good paths and bad paths. Right, paths yes. And our lives will get easier. Get easier. Yes, yeah. yes. So yeah, that's a good point. Like, what do you, uh, can you tell me about what are the good paths are there in Canada? Because you are based in Canada. You, I think, yeah. Yeah, you are Canadian, right? Yes. Uh, means what are the good parts? If you can share some your insight or something like that. Yeah. Right now, to to keep it simple, there's three: healthcare, skilled trades, STEM. Okay. Now that's an oversimplification. There's kind of like nuanced pockets within those three groups, mm -hmm. but those three groups. Okay. These are the three major groups are having a good opportunity or good uh, future in Canada, right? Exactly. So if okay. within healthcare, if you break it down, there's practical nursing, there's okay. PSW or personal support worker. Right. Technically in different provinces, it's called different things. So okay. it's like a, a healthcare aid support worker in some provinces okay. and, and so on, but right, right. Um, you get the idea. Yeah. In, in skilled trades, it's everything from carpenters to welders to HVAC technicians. There are right. so many jobs available. Right. The, okay. un, the, unfortunately, the one area that's not very plentiful for jobs is the like the basic simple business programs yeah simple business program yes uh, i think lots of students are in this program right now in canada and i yeah. think they are struggling a lot right you are correct uh, can you tell me more about the trade program everyone is talking about the trade as a person who, uh, who is in canada is a canadian they can explain more about the trades so i want yeah. from your side what is trade and how the trade is going to impact the student as well as the canadian economy yeah, this is such an interesting one. I, I was just coming from Africa, so it's maybe even more apparent there. Mm -hmm. But the, the difference of the status in the, the earning potential of those jobs here and in Africa versus Canada is, is so different, it's so hard to even explain yes. to people. We were talking about the stat earlier where if you ask someone, what do you think makes more money? Mm -hmm. a, a plumber just outside of school or a director of marketing? Yes. Okay. In almost everyone's mind, they think a marketer is going to make way more money. Way more money, yes. In, in Canada, funnily enough, skilled trades workers earn somewhere between like 80 to 100,000 pretty wow. quickly after school. Uh, and when you also factor in that, you know, you and me, our jobs are 24 seven. Yeah. People can true. message my phone at Anything. 1 a.m., 2 a.m. Yes. When you're a plumber or you have one of these trades jobs, the beauty of it is you work when you're at work. Okay. When you're not at work, you can't be fixing, can't be fixing someone's, pipes. someone's pipes. And so the quality of life is like, even better in the sense of if you right. divide the salary by hours worked, okay. it's, it's almost by far the best, which is really funny. All right, right. The second part of that question is, what are they contributing? Yes. These are the people who are building the housing and the infrastructure right. and the healthcare systems and how all these things connect. Mm -hmm. They're incredibly important for everybody. Yes. And maybe the last point is, these are highly respected people in Canada. Okay, you're not looked down upon maybe in the same way that you are here or other parts yes. of the world. Okay. Um, everybody is aware of how important these kind of jobs are. Okay. And they're very important to Canada. So they're, they don't have the same position in the economy. Right. So that means here. in Canada, like if you are a senior director or if you are a plumber, you will get the same respect, right? You're going to get very similar. Yes. That's, yeah. that's maybe what's surprising. Yes, because yeah. because in India, if student is uh, going Canada and doing plumbing, so they feel it's like a, it's it's a it's it's not for me because plumbing can do by some another people. Yeah, I can do only a skill job or like some something which is uh, which is like it's really good or you can say is a professional job. Yeah, and you are telling that the plumbing having the same respect in Canada. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think it, it takes a second for everyone to kind yes. of get how, yeah. how different the world is no, there. Yeah. Okay. Um, and, and don't get me wrong, there are great jobs in business if you make yeah. it to the top of the top. I think people just don't understand how much more competitive, more competitive. it is. Yes, right. You're competing with the smartest people, the hardest working the hardest people, working all for those same number of small jobs. small jobs. In these trades, you have the benefit of a much simpler, straightforward simpler, life right. where you're very well compensated. Right. 
And it's great for families. It's great for all of these other things. Yes. Can you tell me more about the trade program? Like one is plumbing, one is carpentry. Yeah. And what are the other, uh, according to your research, what are the other trade program which is going to boom in next couple of years, where our yeah. viewers and students can uh, understand like this is the course they need to take if they want to be successful in Canada? No, good, good point. So the way that we're seeing it is there are the core trades. These are the things that are required to build anything. Right. So on the housing side, you have carpentry, okay. you have plumbing, okay. you have uh, electrical, electrical, okay. and you have HVAC. HVAC, yeah. It's so heat, heating, popular, cooling yeah. in Canada heating is very cooling, important. Yes. Gets very cold, but it also gets very, very hot. Hot, yes. Yes. Yeah, so you need both. If you extrapolate that to like big buildings or infrastructure projects, you have the same. They're just specialized for bigger, mm -hmm. higher voltage, whatever the More situation voltage. might be. Right. Right. So those four core things are not going to steer you wrong. Okay. okay, those those are going to be there no matter what. In, in water, yes, that's true. In addition to that, you have welding and you yeah. have HVAC, HVAC, which is which are both very big. Okay, that's good. So uh, these are kind of more where you mix almost between skilled trades and manufacturing. manufacturing. Okay. Canada is going to try to invest a lot to get manufacturing back on shore, much okay. like the U.S. is doing over the last two years. Last two years, yes. These trades are going to be very, very popular. In fact, like one of the is called CNC precision CNC, machining. Yes. Yes. If you look in Alberta, there's places where you can make 130k right out of school. Wow. Okay. One hundred. Very well paid. Yeah. Wow, that's a good number, guys. Okay. So I think these are the trade program I think students need to take if they are planning for Canada. And I think you. Uh, one more question I have uh, about the education system of Canada. Yeah. I, we have seen there is a one university and there is college. Yeah. What are the difference between university and college as 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 your perspective? Yeah. It would be nice if it was so simple that you could say it's this or it's that. that. Uh, unfortunately, what, what I try to think of is like most people when they're thinking about education in Canada, it's, it's about the education, but it's also about what comes after. Yes, what comes after. Yes, so we yes, try yes. to think a lot about what do people get after because yes. that's really what they're paying yes, for. Yes, exactly. And then how do I help them see what they're putting in and what they're getting what out. What they're getting out, yes. <laughs> yes. So, so unfortunately, when you do, when you do the, the number crunching, if you if you got master's programs here and you've got college programs here, mm -hmm. uh, it's not you know PhD, master's, bachelor, college down here. It's more of like master's and college here. Okay? okay, the best of the best programs are master's programs at Waterloo at U of T. Not surprising. Yes, that's true. I think what's surprising is as you go down the schools and the program mm -hmm. types, there are many college programs like the ones we were just talking yes. about which actually gets students much better results than university, university programs. University program, yes, yes. So unfortunately, that means for students and families, it's more sensitive to working with the right partners like you, right. who can help them see that it's not just a college or university. Colleges, university yes. It's what college and what program, program. actually really matters. Right. Yes, that's yeah. true, that's true, amazing. Yeah, and like, uh, and if you can tell about the basic difference of university and college, because I can understand like yeah. college is good for the trade program, uh, university is good for master's program, or you can say about if you want to do a PhD or something like that. But lots of people having doubt. Uh, like in Canada, if you do master, you will get a job easily. If you do, uh, if yeah. you do a PG diploma or something, it's very, uh, very difficult to get job. Like, what is the truth in that? Like, what is the truth? The, the truth is that it, it's really mixed. Okay. So, so number one, think about an economy is all of us doing all of the things we do. We. Yeah manufacture here, we sell food over here. It's all of that put together. Right. So the economy is like a living organism. It's changing all the time. Okay. And the right way to think about it is that the, the best path to success is going to change just as the economy changes. Okay. Okay. So right now what's true in Canada is that our population is getting older. Okay. There are no new 18 year olds to take those jobs that have a large number of employee base. Okay. Right. So nursing, practical, uh, sorry, PSW, these trade jobs. They're a decent percentage of overall jobs. Okay. So as my parents retire, there is no 18-year-old to take those jobs. That's why there's so many opportunities. Oh, okay. But on the business side, there's so many students coming in, okay. plus domestically studying those programs, that you're competing with everybody for a small number of jobs. Good point, yeah. That's and then hilariously, point. on the other side, there's all of these jobs open, okay. but no students going for no them. No students going for them. Yeah, yeah. so yes. there's, there's a weird mix match happening. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. And I think you are in the abroad education industries from last lots of years. Yes. Uh, like what do you, what do you, what do you can say about India? Like what, what, like how Canada will uh, acquire Indian talent or like what kind of talent in uh, Canada is looking for? Yeah. Means like what's your experience uh, for the Indian students in Canada? 
I, I think India is a really special place that the, the natural desire for education and pursuing a better life for yourselves and your families is so strong. Okay. But there's not many countries with that strong yeah, of a strong backdrop. backdrop. I think where things will go over the next couple of years is it's going to realign to quality. Okay. I think, in my opinion, over the last three or four years, a lot of people have started cutting corners to make money. Oh, yeah, that's true. Uh, on, and everybody in the whole industry is, is, is in part uh, responsible, responsible for this. For this. I, I think the Canadian government is going to take the steps to make sure that you don't want to cut corners on your IELTS. Right. You don't want to try to convince someone to accept you with a lower grade than is required. Great point. Because it's about being successful in Canada, not just getting to Canada yeah, again, right. and then yes. expecting it's all going to be given to you. Given to you. Right? Right, right? So I think it's going to get back to quality. Back to quality, yeah. Uh, I have one more question. Like you can see in last couple of six months, Canadian government and high commission is changing the rules. Yeah. Like what do you think? It's a positive or negative? What What's your take on that? I know I, it's like a little bit of the industry's point of view, it's uh, yeah. number is down, it might be negative. But what do you think about the long run? I, I think when you take a step back and you think that how many countries in the world are openly accepting newcomers from all around the world and allowing them to become citizens? It's, uh, I think very less. There's very, very, few. Few, very few. We should not forget that this whole system only works when the students and the families benefit, but so does the country. Country, yes. So if you think you can cut corners and just put any number of people in Canada or the U.S. or U.K., you get what's happening now. Okay. Good. You have to remember that if Canada doesn't feel like it's winning, if the U.S. or U.K. or Australia don't feel like it's winning, they will stop. Yeah, they will stop. And this yeah. opportunity will be cut to everybody. Cut to everybody. So I think to me this is like a, a remembrance of why we're all here. Mm -hmm. To make sure students who deserve great opportunities always have that chance. Yeah. And if you sour it by cutting corners and doing unsavory things, mm -hmm. then you're hurting those students, you're hurting the next student, yes. their next students, their families. Their family. it, it brings everything down. Everything down, yeah. yeah. It means like, it's, it's, you can say in the long run, this is the positive uh, changes is coming in Canada, right? Yes, I, I think it's going to be much better because much better. you want students and families to feel confident right. that when they're making such a big decision, right. they, they have a high degree of confidence that they'll be successful in Canada. In Canada. Right. right. It's horrible that students and families are liquidating their their entire family's and net worth yes, sometimes, net worth sometimes. Yes, yes. to come and not have the opportunity no, no. they were promised. Right. right it's right. wrong that the people falsely promised them things that they yes, couldn't. Yes. It's horrible for the, the families that are going through this. Right, right. It's it's not good for the Canadians who are there. Yes. Right. It's but bad. It's bad for bad, everybody. Bad for everybody. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So like, what do you think? Like, in uh, what are the changes you want to see in Indian agent? Because I know that lots of people have taken advantage in past, but now the Canada yeah. immigration is changing. I think, what's your take on Indian agent? Like, what are the skills or what are the things they need to change in their day-to-day -day life? Because uh, it's not like a, like in the past, students are coming and giving any school and any program. Yeah. But now, what kind of counseling we need to uh, guide students and mm. how the in Indian industry is uh, can you give insight on that? Like, what are the changes as an agent we need to make? Yeah, I think that's the, that's a very good question to ask. My my opinion on it, and this is this is my opinion, is agents need to re remember why we are all in this business. Good. That if done right, you're doing something incredible. Yes. You're uplifting a family, family. and changing you're changing not just their life, but they're they're. Cascading, cascading families yes life. that's true entire life and entire i think entire population you can say or maybe entire uh student and their entire family yes yes and so to me what i see is like th this industry is a, a nerdy book reference is it's a tale of two cities it has the best of people and the worst of people yes right the, the best of us hopefully are trying our best to make sure that we're doing things that change the game for everybody so Anybody, anywhere, as long as you're honest, hardworking, I want to be able to get you to that, that other place. Okay. There are others who are finding very attractive ways to make a lot of money on this. Um, and in some sense, I respect that because everyone has their own families and, and families things to support. to support. I find it's unfortunate because it hurts students in the process oh, yes. and it hurts the whole industry. The whole industry. Yes. Um, so my preference would be for people to do the right thing, connect students to the right programs at the right schools, which actually lead to jobs and things down the line. Right. So to me, it's not about just filling seats. Mm -hmm. It's about guiding a student to an actual successful career path. Right, right. And 
the sooner we do that, the better. Yep. Yeah, Miss, I, I think as a you have raised a really good point. I think as an agent or as an agent fraternity, we need to uh, revamp our whole idea like why we are in this industry. We are here for changing the lives of students, right? Yeah. Money is a money is cons, uh, concern, but I feel like we need to put student first always rather than the money. Yeah, so you have raised a really good concern and I think uh, agent need to think on that and they need to plan something, they need to enhance their skills, right? Okay, yeah. we are moving forward like, uh, can you tell me the truth of current situation in Canada? Because there is three things is happening right now and students are telling there is no job, there is no housing and there is no quality education. So these are the three points. Like what is the current truth in Canada? Like if you can say, yeah. uh, like from your experience. Yeah. My, my earlier point was it, Canada is good and it's bad. It's bad, yeah. I, I think it's funny to me that people who come to Canada to live in a place that's only in Indian population. Yes, that's a good point. And they will say something like, uh, Canada is dangerous. Right. And like the place so, you're living is not Canada. It's not Canada. Right. And so part of it is students and families need to be honest that they're coming to Canada for some of the cultural differences that exist in Canada. Yes. People should try to assimilate and become Canadians in the truest sense. Yes. We're happy that you still follow your own traditions, own tradition, your own holidays. Yes. All of yeah. those things are welcome. Yeah. Everything is welcome in Canada. Lots of celebration. Indian celebration is going on. I think yeah. Yeah, Canada is a very welcome country for all the students. Yeah. yeah. So, so when people say there's no jobs, it's unsafe or kind of those things, to me, it's very clear that it's because they're going to the bad programs at the bad schools Good point. and they're living in a place that's not representative of Canada. Right, right. It's representative of the place they're coming from. Coming from. Okay. Very you good. Know, and, and to me, it's like, we, this is a very solvable problem. Solvable problem. There, are yes. there are many pathways that are, you've never, like, it's the easiest it's ever been to be successful, oh, right. but there are many others where you're never going to be successful. Right. Unfortunately, we're seeing a lot of people talking about mm -hmm. from the perspective of they took the paths where success is very hard. Very hard, yes. And how about like uh, quality of education? Like uh, lots of students are complaining about the quality of education. You have seen any uh, downside of that or maybe anything, uh, any, any, any insight on that? Like yeah. have you ever feel that there is a, any issue in quality education? I think it's again a choice of where you go and what you study. Okay, good, good point. Yes. If yes. you go to the top universities, these are research institutes that are creating the most impactful, most important, important tech companies, tech companies on planet Earth. Yes. Every company in Silicon Valley ever is filled with University of Waterloo. That's my alma mater, so yes. going to shout it out. It, we're filled in every important company ever. Okay. So it's completely crazy for me to hear like Canada, it doesn't have great education. Mm -hmm. yes. But if you cut a corner and you go to the cheapest school you can find with no back checks into its quality or reputation, right. Right. then in some sense, you're accountable. Accountable, yes. Right? Everyone knows the difference. In difference. India, is there a difference between the IITs and the and lowest the universities? Lowest university, yes. Of course. That's a, that's a really good point. Right, of course yes. there is. Of course there right? is. Yes, yes. And like uh, as an Indian student, what advice you would like to give to students when they are selecting Canada as a country for further education. So what are the two points you will, yeah. you would give, uh, what are the advice, what advice you would like to give to the Indian students? Because uh, all lots of Indian students are going to yeah. Canada and uh, they also want to be successful because yeah, yeah. they are putting their whole entire saving family savings over there. So as yeah. a, as a graduate from Waterloo, as uh, living in Canada and having in abroad educations from last couple of years, what are the two key points that you will uh, advise students? Sure. One is maybe the, the context is remember that what's happening, all of these changes might feel like it's random and scary, mm -hmm. but all the Canadian government is trying to do is make sure that the newcomer populations coming into Canada mm -hmm. are aligned with where Canada really needs help taking all of these jobs. Okay. So whenever you're like, what is going on? Just imagine that scenario and things will probably make a lot of sense. Make sense yes. Okay. So hopefully that helps people feel less scared about, scared. about changes. Yes. Two is remember that you're accountable for your own life. Yes. The good thing about Canada is if you have some help and you select the right pathway, mm -hmm. any honest person who is going to work their butt off in those early years to be successful can be. Okay. So there is nobody that can't make it as long as they're willing to do the work. Right. But if you think cutting corners, not learning how to speak English really confidently is a good step to get to Canada faster, you're actually just hurting yourself. Hurting yourself. 
did, did you know that the, the most important variable that predicts future income in Canada mm -hmm. is your ability to speak English? Oh. That's it's the most important variable. Oh my God. That's a, yeah. Okay. And, and that's in stats can data. So it's worth it for you to spend another six weeks with six Darshan, weeks. get your IELTS as good as it All possibly right. can be. And you will reap the benefits once yes. you're going through your school and you get to the job part right. of your right. life. Right. Right. So like, uh, I have one more question on that. Like, uh, like, uh, like how that language test help students or what are the, what are the things students need to take care? Because I have seen that the lots of students are not giving English language test. Maybe they have a less score. They are thinking that this, this is just a benchmark to reach Canada. But actually what we feel is that if you learn IELTS, it will help you to grow more when you reach to Canada. Means what's, what do you think like in, in your day to day life, when you encounter any international students, yeah. what you feel like they are lacking in skills, they are lacking in language test, they are lacking in personality. Like, what do you think about it? Like, what do you feel? I think there's a general cultural thing that I've noticed. So mm -hmm. for, forgive me for it. Maybe I'm off here. So let me know. No. Yes. I, I sense that it's rewarded in the culture here mm -hmm. to find ways to get an advantage. Yeah. That's so true. that leads to people thinking there's a way to, to pay for something that gets you through a door that gets you to the place you want to go faster. faster. Okay. And that mindset is not helpful to Canada. Okay. In my opinion. That's a good point. You are much better to know that the system is designed where if you do the right things and you do it well, you right. will be rewarded. Okay. Yeah. So it's I understand bad. why people are applying like, what their life is like, how right. things work here okay. to Canada, but you get into some trouble. Right. You, you cut your corner, you get maybe not the maybe IELTS not score that you should score. or the PT or TOEFL score you should. You don't study that hard for your math test or, or whatever the case might be. It's worth it to do the foundational things right. All right. Because it compounds and life gets way easier later once you're in Canada. Right, right. Okay. Like the one, one thing, imagine you're Sachin Adele or you're one of these guys who are all taking over the world right now. Yes. Do you think they could get to the positions they're in if they don't speak English? Of course not. Of course like, not. of yeah. course not. So think about it. You're in a country that speaks English. English, yes. You must speak English. You must speak English. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Life will be much, much, much easier, easier for you, for you if you're yes. very, confident. very confident. It allows you to communicate with all of the different cultures and ethnicities that are there right. because English is the common factor. Common factor. Right. Right? right. This is how you feel like you can assimilate, build friendships in right. different cultures and be part of Canada in a wider right. sense. Right. Right. You right. know, that's the basis of it all. Yeah. Now, if we, if we talked a lot about Canada and like, I just want to go in depth, uh, like according to your research, which province is booming right now in the form of technology? I think there's a few actually. Okay. So what Canada has seen is that Silicon Valley is an incredible magnet that brings all of the world's best people there. Mm -hmm. And so everyone is trying to figure out ways to replicate it. Okay. We have some advantages between the Waterloo Toronto corridor. Okay. There's four or five incredible universities that are top yes. research institutes producing some of the world's best software and other engineers that are creating the technologies of tomorrow. So that's an obvious area. Okay. If you look at Montreal and what they're doing across yeah. our AI and other areas, okay. they're incredibly uh, talented. Okay. Calgary is coming up very quickly. Okay. And that's like in a range of software to uh, battery energy tech and so on. Now you even have Dalhousie in the East Coast. Yeah, Dalhousie doing clean also. tech and doing a whole bunch of other uh, innovative okay. research as well. So I would say there's a, probably at least five or six different pockets, and I'm sure I'm forgetting some. Well, yeah. How about British Columbia, Miss, uh, as a as a growing market of technology? No, 100%. 100%. I, I think it's there as well. I don't. In my mind, it doesn't take as big of a stance, but maybe it's because of the tech world I'm in is focused around Toronto. Okay. I know many companies are being founded and built there. Okay. Um, UBC is a great school. There are a ton yeah, of other supporting support. schools that that feed into that. Right. Um, and that's why I'd say I don't think it's even right to say it's like one province or another. Another province, right. All of them are good at different things. Different things. And you just want to make sure you're aligning your skills with okay. where you're going. Where you're going. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that means like right now I, we have seen in India, uh, lots of students are moving to Alberta. They are showing interest of Alberta. And it's, it's, it's very recent because it used to be Ontario. Yeah. It used to be a Quebec. Now it's showing interest into Alberta. Like is, is there anything happening in Alberta? anything is coming or something is big well can you share share your thoughts because maybe you know, some big companies are moving or what yeah. no no i so in my in my opinion it boils down to this 
Okay. One of the one of the incredible things about Canada is its stability. Okay. It prides itself on good governments. It's it's literally one of the the core principles of the country. Okay. Now the downside of that kind of government approach is sometimes you can be overregulated. Okay. It makes it hard for people who are trying to bring us all into the future uh -huh. to do anything. There's so much red tape rules and things you've got to follow. Okay. Alberta has an approach that's much more similar to the United States. Oh, okay. They believe in free enterprise and allowing people to do things much more easy. Okay. And so I think in this time when we've seen regulation burden increase, okay. Alberta relatively feels like it's way easier, easier in lower America. cost of living because there's less regulations, less taxes, all these right, things. Right, right, right. And so it's no wonder that it's doing really well. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. That's a great. Uh, okay. Uh, I think the podcast is going really great we have getting lots of good insight from bobby and i would like to ask more questions on that as well <laughs> because it's all about canada uh, like right now lots of parents and students have a negativity about canada like what do you say uh, what are the positive thing is canada po positive thing is going in canada if you can share because yeah people are making decision on social media because you know right right now yep. Yesterday, one parents came to me and they told me this is the deals, and yeah. like you can yeah. see, there is no job or something like that. I said like it's it's also happening in India as well. There, there is lots of lots of people are uh, in line to get the job to get the interviews, right? Yeah, means each and every everywhere there is a different situation. Yeah, but I don't know why social media is impacting them a lot. So I just want to want to get idea like what is what is the current situation in Canada. I know it's like negative. It's it's okay, but what are the positive side? Because in life we never see the positive side. We always look at the negative side. So what are the positive way yes. in Canada? No, like to me, I actually have a lot of empathy and I understand it. Mm -hmm. To me, the the simplest explanation of why it's because a bunch of people went to bad schools and bad programs. Okay. They weren't successful, and now they're telling everybody about it. Yes. Okay. So to me, the the result of that is things that have happened over the last eighteen mm -hmm. to twenty four to thirty six months. So to me, this is very, I knew this was going to happen. This, this okay. seemed in inevitable. Okay. Now, if you look at it, even in India, I think the stat that I'm aware of is between 50 and 55% of engineering graduates of university are unemployed. Unemployed, yes. So it's not like it's easy anywhere. Yes, that's true. It's not easy anywhere, yeah. The UK, Australia, Australia US yeah, is US. the same. Is the same, yeah. The expectation is you have to work hard for getting to that spot where you become comfortable afterwards. Right, right. That is going to happen no matter what. To me, I think what's obvious is that Canada had such high regard five years ago. Mm -hmm. If you compare it to how people feel now, no. it's just because people thought of it so highly five years ago. Mm -hmm. And so the difference feels so much more stark to people. Yes. Right? It hits right. them in the face. Hits them in the face, yes. And that, again, makes sense to me. But you, the same situations are there in the UK and okay. Australia. Yes. You think you're going to immigrate simply to Germany or Japan? No, no it's. I, I I think it's going to be hard for people hard, to learn yes, yes. German, German or Japanese, Japanese or any of these other yes. things. So, I think what I would always tell people is that you are in charge of your destiny. Mm -hmm. You can make your life in Canada very easy by picking the right pathways, or you can make your life very hard. Hard. Okay. Yes. So Canada is both great and really bad. And really bad. Yeah. It depends on how much how, work you put in right. to make sure that you're aligned with the good paths. Okay. Right? Yeah, the that's... things that underlie why Canada is a great place for newcomers is no one really questions. Mm -hmm. Culturally, we're happy to accept people that are different than ourselves yeah. to learn and all together be better than any of us are individually. Right, right, right? right. No one questions that it's safe that someone is going to try to mug you on the street. No, I don't think so. It's, it's, it's safe. Is is very safe. I can say exactly. So those those things are still all there. Yeah. I think the thing people remember is that it's not some kind of land of milk and honey where you just show up on the border and voila, oh, every everything is given is to you. Given to you, yeah. Um, some amount of work is required, and this is mostly on parents and students. Right. You should be accountable to make sure where you're going, mm -hmm. what you're studying, aligns with jobs and aligns with what you want after. Right. If you do that, I think you'll be very successful. successful. And if you don't, I think it will be very tough. Be very tough. Yeah, that's that's a great insight, and like it's a positive way we are spreading right now for Canada. Yeah. Because lots of parents and the students are listening to their seniors who are, who who are, who are in Canada right now. Yeah. And they are telling they don't have a job, but they don't understand like they are in the wrong college or maybe in the wrong program. 
Yeah, yeah. I think that's lead yeah. lead them in to, for having no jobs. I think so because if you talk about University of Waterloo, right? I think they have a ninety five percent placement ratio or something like that. Yeah, and they have the great ecosystem. Yeah. Yep. And uh, like you studied from University of Waterloo, well, like what's your feedback? If you can tell about the university and like how they are helping students and how the day to day course structure and like like yeah. how how university helping to build like uh, helping to build the company or uh, how to invest in the students. I I think when Canadian universities are doing their best, it's incredible. Waterloo provides this incredibly unique ecosystem where not only do they have top tier mm -hmm. facilities, top tier teachers, really challenging curriculum that forces students to grow and not coddle to uh, the easiest, lowest, simplest grade type okay. of students. You actually get something really special. Number one, you get a bond with your classmates okay. because you've gone through this together. Right. Two is that employers and other people are happy to seek you out. Oh, okay. because they know that you've went through that and therefore you're a certain kind of person. Right. Not only are you intelligence and able to handle the force load, okay. but you have the persistence to push through adversity. Right, right, right. So again, to me, it, it's, it seems to come back to this one theme of making sure that you're not cutting corners, making right. sure you're focusing on quality, quality and doing the right things, yes. and then the results will come. Wow, great, great. That means you have the great experience with the University of Waterloo. Yeah, I'm maybe biased, but I think it's an incredible place. incredible place. If you want to be an entrepreneur, if you want to build the next great tech company, I don't think there's a much better place to be in all of Canada. Oh, wow. Yeah. Great, great. And now we can come back to the passage, right? Uh, like, as, as we, uh, we were discussing, like, how the passage is helping the students. Yeah. Uh, can you tell me a little bit more? I will give you an example. Like, I have a couple of students, and one student is really good. Uh, and I think she is not getting the loan. And she is also having good IELTS score with a good profile, and she has a real intention to go Canada. Yeah. But she has only ten thousand dollar, Canadian dollar. Yep. How passage is going to help them? No, perfect. This is a great example. So what we do today is we're on a path to go from uh, where we where we're starting to eventually be able to help anyone in the world, no matter how much money they have or okay. don't have. Okay. So phase one for us is we can basically reduce the cash a family needs by seventy five percent. 75%? Yeah. Wow. So importantly, the way that our funding works is we don't come after your house. We don't come after your car, your income. Yes. No uh, income tax records needed. So that we, means, we don't go through any of that stuff. Okay. That means we, you don't need uh, any uh, mortgage, right? Correct. Yeah. You don't look at our income tax return. Correct. You don't look at our civil score. Nope. Okay. So, okay. Means the, what you are looking in that? We are looking for a few things. Talented, hardworking students. Okay. People who have an ambition to do really well in their life. Okay. Um, and people who can add to the Canadian economy. Okay. If you meet all three of those things, we will bet on the student directly with our own money. Wow. And it's important that people understand that we don't come after your house and all of these things for a particular reason. Okay. It means I have to be able to help predict those right pathways that I've talked about on this podcast, mm -hmm. the right schools, School, the right programs, program. the right jobs. Okay. If I don't do that, you probably won't be able to repay me and I'm going to lose a lot of money. Yes. Right. That's, that's the honest truth. Right. So in this sense, I want to make it clear that we are putting ourselves in the position to be in it with the families. Okay. The student's going to do well, I'm going to do well, or they're not, and I'm not either. Yes. Right. I want to make sure that if I do anything that isn't right, I feel the pain and I lose the money. Okay. This is, I think, is the only way over time to show students that there is an honest way to be way successful to in Canada right. and there are paths that people are selling you that maybe aren't real. Aren't real, yes, that's true. That means like uh, maybe lots of students have a question like if you are funding students, right, to what will be your source of funding? Means like you are not bank. You are not financial institute. Yep. And how the passage will fund students means like uh, because uh, students and parents also al always having question like if this is not the financial institute, it's not an organization, it's not a yeah, yeah. maybe a industrialist. How they are going to fund our students uh, means our kids. And if anything goes wrong after reaching over there, who will be the responsible? Of course, I think all of those things make sense, especially yes. when you consider the history of this industry. Yes. 
many people have made a buck doing bad yes. things. Yeah. I, I totally respect that. And I always tell people, you should not even take my word for it. You should do your own due diligence mm -hmm. and make sure you look into us. I think the good news is, is some of our earlier successes are public. It's not very hard to find out about Martin and all the things he's done. Mm -hmm. The people he's speaking and working with are the most senior government officials across Canada, but also the most senior business leaders across okay. the country. Okay. He's a public figure. It's not like you have to really do digging. Yeah. You, can, you can find and see what he is okay. and his track record. Okay. Two, we try to make sure that we involve our school partners. Uh -huh. So if you take George Brown, for an example, okay. they have an entire web page dedicated to them pitching passage to their students. Wow, George Brown. Yeah, it's so the, this isn't just passage saying, hey, trust me. Yeah. It's our schools also recognizing the value we're bringing to bring quality students and diverse students wow. to their campus. Okay. Um, and that's a really big component, especially once we start building up um, the successful cases, this will all take care of itself. Okay. But at the beginning, it's important that you look into us, go to passage.com. You can find all of us who are, who are leading the company. We're all pretty easy to find online. So do your own diligence there. I would definitely look into the school and make sure all these other things check okay. out. Okay. Um, but double check double for check. sure. Yes, sure. Yeah. Miss, you told like George Brown. It's like, I can say it's like a Canada's number one college. I can say in a couple of programs. Means they have the separate page for passage, right? Yes. So that yes. means they have like uh, they have put complete trust on you. Yes, I think it's it's been an incredible partnership. They're okay. all the way from their senior leadership down. Mm -hmm. The second we met them, we saw in the same spark they cared about helping students in all these disadvantaged areas in the okay. same way we did. They were also willing to take up the risk of being our first partner and figuring out all of these things together. Mm -hmm. Um, could not be more thrilled with working with them and the team. It's been so awesome right. seeing how fast they've evolved to handle different kinds of students, different kinds of programs. Right, right. You know, we are crazy tech people, so we're always pushing, pushing people, people as hard and as fast as, as right. they can, and they've been incredible there. Um, one of the things that I love about George Brown is if you look at their diversity of students today, yeah, it's, it's, it's incredible. It's incredible. Yeah. One, one of the most, if not the most, diverse public college that I'm aware of. Okay. Um, so... I really like that they've stayed focused on a goal of making mm -hmm. sure they have a quality education experience okay. by making sure that it's not one kind of person. person. It's many different perspectives, education okay. backgrounds, and so on. Okay. Means like, uh, like in George Brown, uh, like what are the popular programs and how Passage is helping them or how, how it works? Can you tell me about that? Yeah. Like I, first thing, like what are the popular program in George Brown? Yep. And suppose I am a candidate, I would like to apply uh, to George Brown from yep. Passage, what will be the process? Because we yeah, still yeah. want to understand the transparency of the process. Yep. So the first thing I'll say is that we are very specific because of the way that we fund students and we okay. take all the risk. Okay. I don't fund even all of the amazing programs at George Brown. Okay. Why? I have to be very precise because I have to work backwards from permanent residency pathways and job environment and all of those kind of okay. things to, to right. handpick the programs we'll fund. Right. Okay. So, so George Brown is known for many great programs, some of which are obviously the culinary is a huge focus culinary. and an incredible strength. Yes. But across that, they have really great employment connections across most of their, uh, their, their programs. Okay. That part is maybe less known by people. Okay. But across skilled trades, healthcare and STEM, they're really good at connecting students yes. to employment afterwards. Okay. Our, our focus as a business right now okay. is, on, is on healthcare, skilled trade, and STEM. Okay. So I'll focus maybe on those three areas just because it's what we're focused on. Right. So healthcare, what we're seeing by far the most popular are the, the PSW and practical nursing programs. Mm -hmm. These are maybe some of the most in-demand jobs with the highest amount of job openings. Okay. And maybe the most readily career path that exists after okay. school. Okay. On skilled trades, it goes back to the programs we talked about earlier. There's kind of the core set of trades from carpentry, um, electrical, uh, plumbing, and HVAC okay. to all of the supporting ones like machining and uh, these kind of more right. manufacturing yes. related trades. All of those are very popular and very linked to great employment opportunities after school. Okay. And how the passage will help students to get into George Brown? Like suppose... Uh, I have a $10,000, yeah. uh, I have a good profile and I applied through passes to George Brown, example in yep. like a uh, personal support worker. Now $10,000 apply to 
uh, suppose like first step will be I have clear my IELTS, I have my good profile and yeah. I have a good CGPA. Yeah. I am approaching the passage. Passage will take care of my applications and they will load application to George Brown. Yep. Uh, I will get the offer means it depend upon the profile if you are good profile then and then you are eligible for offer okay suppose student got the offer yep. and student having a 10,000 Canadian dollar yep now how the passage will come in picture great question so so normally what would happen at this stage is on the LOA there's a section that describes how you pay the non-refundable tuition deposit yes that's true yes so this means no matter if you get your visa or not they're, they're charging you yes right with with passage you don't get charged that fee Okay. Instead, what the school says is pay passage the upfront cash collateral. Okay. So in this mint earlier, I said we reduce the cash required by, by seventy five percent. Okay. So let, let's assume that the co the course for a year costs forty thousand, including living costs. Yeah, forty thousand. Okay. okay. So eight, eighteen thousand of tuition. Okay. And the twenty thousand six thirty five from IRCC for living costs. Yeah. So it's just thirty eight thousand. We we'll round it up to forty to keep right. the math easy. That means the twenty thousand uh, is GIC, which uh, yeah. Bobby explained. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry. So so let's say today the family would need forty thousand. Forty thousand. Yes. Okay. What we do is we allow families who only have ten thousand mm -hmm. or even a little less okay. to get access to the same opportunity. Okay. So what we do is we provide a loan that covers the full tuition. Okay. And the first year of living costs. Okay. Okay. That means GIC and the fees. So it means we, we cover, we give a loan that will cover your full yes, tuition and full we'll tuition. pay the, the tuition directly to the school okay. to save you the hassle of all the back and forth okay. of cross-border payments. Okay. Okay. The living cost we pay out like a GIC. GIC. Like is the key word here. Right. Okay, right. so we're not a we're not a registered GIC yes, provider. That's true. Means you are uh, talking to CIBC or maybe some other uh, bank who is providing the uh, GIC, right? Well, what we do is we say there's two situations. Okay. There's there's a situation where it makes sense for a family to use the SDS pathway, mm -hmm. and then there's a situation for other families where the SDS pathway is not an option. It's not an option. Yes. But we can still help you. Okay. 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 Great. So let let's do maybe let's break it down. Let's do the SDS one first. Mm -hmm. Yes. So in the SDS case, you need to pay a full year of tuition up front, so that's eighteen thousand. And you need to pay the year of living cost. Yes, GIC. Yes. So you need forty thousand up front. Forty thousand up front. Yes. With passage, what we allow you to do is you still need to get the GIC from CIBC or other yes. great partners. Right. Okay. So that's the twenty. Mm -hmm. But instead of coming up with the eighteen thousand cash up front mm -hmm. for the full year, mm -hmm. if you come up with four thousand, mm -hmm. passage will cover the rest. Oh wow! So we decrease that amount of cash amount a family of would need to put up by fourteen thousand okay. Canadian dollars. Wow! So that's okay. that's the SDS case. Right. For the non-SDS case, this is for the families who have worked really hard to create some savings, mm -hmm. but they just don't have enough to do all the way. All the way, yes. So in this situation, your options are stay here or use passage. Okay. Right? So for these families, what we say is like, if you can come up with 9,000 to 9,500 Canadian dollars, okay. we can give the same access. We'll fund the full year of tuition, okay. fund the full year of living costs, okay. and you put up the 9,500 as collateral. Okay. So what, what does this mean? This just means I hold this money, mm -hmm. and this is my agreement with the family saying, you're not lying to me. You're using Passage to come to Canada, Canada yes. and honestly study the program and the school that yes. you told me you were yes. studying. Yes. You're not going to come to Canada, not show up to school, not show up to school flee yes. to the United States, yes. try to do all of this other bad stuff. Right, right, if you do, I have, a, I have your money, yes. and I will take it. Yes. Okay, so this is the honesty. Yes. yes. This is me. So me and you are we're yes. being honest with each other. Okay? Yes, that's true. The Mr. second they need to be honest with the passage because you are providing them this much amount of fund yep. because on their talent. Yes. That means we just need to make sure that no one when no one will use uh, as a as a bad player. Exactly. Okay? Or maybe it's a misuse this uh, product. Yeah. Exactly. The good news is once you show me that you're honest and you actually are enrolled and studying in the mm -hmm. program we talked about. Then I'm going to take that amount of money okay. and I'm going to apply it against your loan balance so your monthly loan payment goes down. Okay. So in this sense, it's almost like you're kind of paying up front some portion of your tuition and living costs. Okay. But it's technically like Canada is very big on financial regulations. Right. So I have to be very specific, very specific. when I talk yes. about it. Yes. It's cash collateral. Okay. Cash collateral. Right. So it's kind of what unlocks me funding you in Fund the first place. Okay. But I want to make sure that I'm not punishing honest students. Yes, yes. We but I have a sure. mechanism to punish bad punish students. Punish bad students. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That means uh, lots of students and parents are asking me that this, uh, like, if they have a four thousand dollar or ten thousand dollar, they need to pay to George Brown or they need to pay to Passage. 
you pay to passage. Okay. Yeah. So we have an account that we hold the money in. Okay. And then if anything happens, like say your visa is denied, okay. you get a full refund. We don't take any fees, no penalties, okay. no, no funny stuff at all. Okay. And we do it immediately. Okay. You have this experience. How long yes. does it take you to get the money back for the it's students? It's like, it's like a one month and sometimes uh, two, two, three months to get the refund. Yeah. Yeah. The good news is we're fast. We can do it very quickly. Okay. Um, so the money still has to go from a Canadian to an Indian bank. So it takes like three or four business days. Okay. But our part of it is very fast. Okay. So yeah. it's a very transparent that we need to pay to passage and passage will take care of the rest of the university part. So there is yeah. no any fishy thing over here. Yeah. Uh, another question uh, I'm getting from my uh, from parents is that like student having a funny parents having a funny question to be frank. Uh, they are telling me the moment my kids is reaching to Canada, it possible that passage will take their passport and entire document with them. And they will tell that you are now when if, if you are not going to yeah. pay the fees, uh, we, we are not going to release your passport or something. It, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a question from the parents. I, I just no, no, want to be open with you because look again, that's why I always say I understand the history of this industry enough yes. that parents should always do their due diligence. One of the core benefits of us being a Canadian company is that I'm beholden to the rules and regulations of Canada. Okay. And Canada does not mess around with financial regulations. Yeah, that's okay? true. Yes. I cannot do anything to harm a student. I can't even expose any information that might indicate to someone else who the student is. Oh, okay. Or I face very steep penalties and even eventually jail time for some of these issues. Oh, okay. So, so this isn't like other countries where you can kind of be fishy with money and no yes. one will find out. Yeah. In Canada, the money system works where everything is trackable. Okay. Everything I do is, is known. Okay. Okay. So like I have nowhere to go. Okay. And as I mentioned before, we're not, uh, there's enough profile of us in Canada that we're going to face very, very steep, safe. very steep ramifications. Right. Not only will the business be forced to close, but personally, it has huge implications on ourselves. All right. Right. So th this is not something you could realistically do in Canada. I still appreciate that it's a lot to trust in. Yes. And that's why we do all of these things, like even on the LOA, where the student is instructed to make the payment. That's right. from George Brown. George Brown. Yeah. Right. Th this is not just me as a foreign business trying to say to people, hey, send me a bunch of money yes. this is tightly grouped with the school right because it's about giving awesome students access to great programs okay yeah so i think students it's very clear that it's not like when you reach to canada on airport the passage people will be there and telling you to submit your passport okay so that's the yeah. wrong information it's a canadian government this this company yeah. is like driven by the canadian philosophy canadian government guidelines also with the, all the rules and regulation of the Financial Institute of Canada. Yeah. So I think there is no, it's not a, it's not a company that take, take, take your money or maybe do any, any shitty thing with you. It's a very trustable company. I know the founder very well. I know entire company very well. And they have a very good uh, philosophy, like they want to educate this uh, world. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So that's a good point. Also, like, uh, do we students and parents are asking like if they are going to pay the fees or maybe passage is going to pay the fees or living GIC? Do we do do they get any receipt or something like that to put the visa? Yeah, so this is why the, the parents and the family still has to purchase the GIC from CIBC or whoever else. Okay. Okay, so they will provide you the, the proof of funds for right. the living costs. Okay. Passage will provide you the proof of funds document for tuition payment. Tuition payment. Okay. The family will still need to show the money is in their bank account for the flights, for the biometrics right. and okay. the other kind of components okay. of proof of funds. But we're taking one of the big chunks Okay. for the families who aren't doing the SDS program. So okay. these are the ones who don't have all don't the, money. Have the money. We will, our, our money will be used to show proof of funds for living costs and tuition. Tuitions, yes. Okay. So they'll still need flights and everything, but the two big ones are covered by passage. Oh, okay. So that means like you, yeah. uh, you, you will provide all the documentation, right? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. We call it the passage pass. Passage pass. We, we break down how the funding works. Okay. And you want to make sure that your, um, um, your SOP, your statement of purpose goes right. along very well very with the well. funding, okay. the job, the programs, all of that needs to be linked together for students to have the best chance okay. of success. Okay. So what I can feel uh, right now, the passage is company. If you, if you think that you have a passion and you are very good in education, so you want to do something big in the world, and you don't have a money or you don't have enough money yeah passage is the company can help you to fulfill your dream in canada because we have seen passage help lots of international students to fulfill their dream by helping them 
by funding them and the students are very successful right now in canada and it's a, like a law it's and and it's a very good feedback we are getting from the students that uh that by because of this company they are in canada and they are very successful yeah so that means students if you if you if you are really good talented then definitely you can take a advantage or maybe the service of passage or you can contact me as well yeah. and we can help you uh, to talk with bobby or senior management how the passage is working and we will definitely help you to get in canada also passage is the company who is thinking that like which skill is in demand after couple of years that means yeah. they will provide you the course which is in demand after 5 years so that means you don't have to worry about earning because yeah. the course which you are going to take will yes. definitely have a good return on investment yep correct yep that means they they you will easily pay back the loan by uh, by uh, yep. working uh, in canada yep you've right? got it perfect if you ever want a job let me know that yeah. was great sure <laughs> thank you yeah so this i think lots of people having doubt about this kind of company right because our industry is already been through a lot and it's and each and every day we are seeing lots of fraudulent agent or some agent are doing fishy thing with the students but passage is the company where student they are helping lots of students yeah and you can you can have a trust on them and you can trust me as well uh, also i would like to uh, uh, ask you few more question like uh, so far how many students you uh, you have catered in passage means how many students you have helped in by the passage route this september will probably help 150ish students wow. we're wow. trying to keep it small yes. these are students from all over the world this okay. isn't just one country yes africa south south america middle east southeast asia li literally all over all okay. over the world okay. um and maybe about 10% of that in our refugee program okay so this was the program i was telling you about where about 10% of the money we put out mm. we want to make sure we're funding people from the hardest walks of life okay refugees people from slum areas slum area. people whose parents have nothing nothing okay we want to show the world that even in these areas where people have the most disadvantage mm -hmm. there are incredible talents that canada and other countries could really benefit from right. if they could get their mindset right that there is incredible talent in those pockets and we're going to just try to unlock it and show the world that it's there okay great that means like you are not looking at the bigger number you just want to look at the quality people right it's quality and the quality students it, it's it's a really funny situation because if you actually just stop and only focus on the quality yeah. all of our students are going to have great success they're going to tell their friends and the quantity will come anyways yes that's... so for me we only care about one thing and that's quality quality okay. canada needs to feel like they're winning right. the student needs to feel like they're winning the yes. family needs family to feel like they're winning, winning. Yes. if we do that well then the rest will just will happen naturally okay. right right and like can you tell me the core uh, vision and mission of passage means what is your what is the uh, vision of passage and mission yeah. of the passage all of this starts with the story of of our incredible founder martin basiri mm -hmm. if you guys look up martin you can hear some of his talks on youtube and you'll hear how much he's wearing his heart on his sleeve yes. when he talks about his own life experience going from iran, iran. to to north america, north america. and and what he is going to spend his whole life doing is right, finding ways right. to make sure that every deserving kid out there it doesn't matter where you're from right. who your parents were if you're honest hard working you're going to get the same opportunity as anyone else okay. period yes that that's all we think about it's all we do that's all we're ever going to do okay yeah that means you are unlocking the opportunities for lots of students I, I, students with an asterisk remember like asterisk. quality students quality students yes I, i think this is the thing that we'll be very strict on is okay. that we need to make sure that the students can do well yes. because when you repay us i'm going to take that money and give it to the next yes. student next students yes so if you're not successful you're not only hurting me in the short term you are you're preventing me from helping the next student and the next student and the next student so we need to make sure quality is a core focus okay okay so can you tell me about like uh, how old passage is right now Yeah, it's two years. So we started the company early last year, okay. but as I mentioned, there was kind of this long prehistory where we were trying to figure out how to use some of Martin's success to help students. Okay. So we've been thinking about this for three or four years. Okay. And as you mentioned, we've been in the industry a while, so yeah. we knew a lot about how immigration right. works, how international education, and how colleges and universities work, and and so on. What was what was missing is the financial knowledge of how to 
use our industry knowledge to make sure we can get money to the right to people, the right people yes. in the right places. Right, right. Yeah. And can you tell me about the, what will be the future of Passage? Means what will be the next two year roadmap of Passage? Sometimes it's easier to go farther out. Yeah. <laughs> Who knows what's going to happen <laughs> yes. with, with all the crazy all world, the crazy world yeah. events happening. So let, where we're going, 20 years from now, 10 years from now, however long it takes, we want to be able to fund people from literally anywhere. Okay. I don't care if you're in the middle of the Congo right now, you're somewhere in a village in India that no one's ever heard of. Mm -hmm. As long as you can show that you have the interest, the, the aptitude, and you're working hard to go somewhere, we want to make sure we can fund you going anywhere. Not just Canada. Maybe 10 years from now, one of the best places to be is South Africa South or Argentina Africa. Yes. or Germany India. or South Korea or China. Who knows? Yes. We, we shouldn't care where the student is going. Okay. Our job is to make sure we're building the technology that allows us to fund students regardless of where they want to go. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's, I think that's a great, I think, vision and mission, I can say. And I think you are doing amazing because you are changing the lives of students as well as the parents. Thank you. Yeah. That's a great thing. Uh, also, we can go more on that. Like, uh, can you tell us something about Canada and Canadian education system, and uh, what is the what is the positive side of the Canada? Because I just want to listen to what is the positive side of Canada. We already talked what yes. is positive and what is negative, but what yes. what do you feel from your heart about Canada? For for myself the thing that like stands out when i think of my country especially now that i've got to travel mm -hmm. to countries all over the world mm -hmm. helping students i think canadian people like just in their heart are good mm -hmm. they really care about people who have less than them mm -hmm. they really want to give other people opportunities mm -hmm. they believe in people being honest and truthful okay. and doing the right thing okay that's a rare set of that things is. And when you put it together, I think Canada becomes a, a great place. And I don't think it's surprising that many people mm -hmm. wanted to go there for a long period of time. It's because it's safe. It's stable. it's stable. You can raise a family and reliably know that you can provide for them. Mm -hmm. um, I think all of that is the core of Canada and that will stay forever. Right. I think the thing that we need to do better is we need to make sure that once we align the quality students, quality newcomers with the, the areas where there's jobs, everybody is going to be better off. And then a lot of the hope and the way people spoke about Canada two or three years ago will be back. back yes. it's, it's more like a wave than wave, it is a crash. A crash. And there will be a up for sure. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. And like I have one, uh, I would like to ask you like what will be the future of Canada? Like what do you think, like what is going to happen after two years or maybe a three years in Canada uh, as a part of political or maybe as a part of education, international education? What do you think? What's your insight? It's a good question. Honestly, I don't have a crystal ball. Mm -hmm. So I'll give you my personal opinion. Yeah, I don't yes. think this is Passage's opinion. I think yeah, this it's is your just personal opinion. Yeah, that's true. the way that I'm seeing it. Yeah. Um, I think it's most likely that the Conservatives will win mm -hmm. okay. the election next year. Okay. And they are going to be much more, I guess, I'll call it pragmatic, but I don't even know if that's the right word, about immigration, okay. where they're going to make sure that we're ensuring that Canadians feel like they're winning. Okay. Now, that doesn't actually mean it's bad at all for okay. international, international students. students. I think it's actually going to disproportionately be very good for the quality students quality who are there students. for the right reasons. Right. And it's going to shut out the students who are claiming asylum, doing all of these kind of bad things that are, okay. are, are ruining the reputation of the country. Okay. So in my personal opinion, it's like the, the medicine that your mom gives you. It really, it tastes bad at first, first yeah. but then you but feel better. Feel better, yeah. You know, I think it's it's a, a deep breath of sanity that okay. is going to move us all forward. Right, right. Great. Yeah. And uh, in early our, uh, early our discussion, you told like uh, lots of people are uh, retiring after a couple of years in Canada. Can yeah. you highlight about that? Like what population is decreasing or there is a reverse population is going yeah. on. Like what's going on in Canada in the sense of populations? Yeah, so if... This is also true for most of the West. Okay. So as people become more wealthy, mm -hmm. they typically have less children per family. Okay. Okay. So if you have less than 2.1 kids per family on average, mm -hmm. your population is actually going to naturally decrease over time. Okay. So Canada is in that situation. Okay. So after World War II, a lot of people had babies. 
we had a very large balloon in the population. Yes. That population is now getting to the age where they're retiring. Okay. So the point is those subsequent generations didn't have the same number of children okay. as those did after the war. Okay. So that means our population is like 40% over uh, 45 or 50, I believe. Okay. So every year, a new group of people are 65 and they're retiring. Okay. Now, if you don't have enough 18 year olds to take those jobs, yeah. think about it. There is just clearly a, a lack. A, like a gap is a big gap. There's a gap. Yeah. And, and that's structural. There's nothing Canada can do about it. Right. It would have to go back 20 years and get people to have <laughs> more children. And I don't know no. how they can do that. All right. So Canada really requires a really great way to bring in awesome newcomers from all over the world. Okay. Okay. And all that you're seeing right now is that it's realizing that it needs to do more to align the newcomers coming in with these kinds of job areas all right, right, right. and not just say, hey, come in for any reason. Any reason yeah. Why? It's not that we don't want them. It's that it leads to lack of success and then people are frustrated and Canada doesn't want that yes. and it's not the right thing to do. Obviously, that's true. Yeah. I agree. So that means like there is lots of opportunity in Canada in upcoming year. Just student, you need to make sure that you are going to right program and right college with right mindset. That's, that's what it is. That's you know, it. If you if you follow this process, I, I I I don't think so. You are not going to be successful in Canada. For yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Means if you if you have a good program, good university or college, and if you are having a good skill, sky is yeah. the limit for you in Canada for sure. I yeah. think that's a hundred percent. Yeah, that's true. Okay. Uh, I think I, we are at the end of the podcast and I just uh, want to ask you a last question like what's, what, what are the things you would like to share to international students from your perspective from last couple of years like students need to take care while they are in Canada and what they need to do to be successful in Canada? I think the most successful students are good at working backwards from their goals. Okay. So maybe your goal is to get the best education and come back to India. Maybe your best goal is to find ways to get PR. Maybe it's anything in between. But the point is the best way to make sure that you get what you want mm -hmm. is to think and know what you want and then work backwards. So let's okay. take an example of a student wants to become a permanent resident in Canada after mm -hmm. being in the healthcare sector. Mm -hmm. So you would go through and you would figure out the provinces where there are a lot of job openings in different healthcare fields. Let's take nursing as an example. Okay. Nursing is one of the largest job shortage areas across okay. the country. And it's also maybe the most important as your parents get older, someone needs to be there to look after yes, them and, and yes. so on. So if there are, you know, five times more nurses needed in Alberta than Ontario, just, just a random hypothetical, yeah, yeah, hypothetical. Then, then clearly your plan should align with Alberta. Okay. Yeah, that's true. Then you yeah. should work backwards and figure out, hey, what schools and programs best lead me to getting that first great nursing job in Alberta? Okay. Right. Then what qualifications do I need to get into that school and that program? Right. How good does my English need to be? Right. What should my math marks be? Okay. My chemistry. If you do those things, you give yourself a very, very good chance wow. of getting where you want to go. Wow. That's a good way. That's a good way. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for highlighting this. This is a really nice way to think reverse or think backward. I think it's, it's a good fund, uh, good uh, approach to take for any students right now. And uh, yeah, Miss, uh, uh, I think what else we can talk, Miss? What, any other point you would like to take? Anything? Um, maybe let's talk about the specifics of repayment. Or like, what does it mean to yes, have the yes. loan? Okay, yeah. So what we do specifically yeah. is we do a lot of this thinking backwards for students. Okay. We do all of the an analytics to make sure that the jobs are there. Mm -hmm. We do the work to connect the schools and the programs to those jobs. Okay. And we also do all of this work to figure out what students' living expenses will be, how much they need for food, how much for rent, all of these things. Okay. Because I need to know how much money I can give to a student okay. and have them be able to comfortably repay me. Okay. Yep. Right? Yes. If I give them too much money, they won't re be able to repay, I lose. Yes. If I don't give them enough, I can't get them the opportunity. Right, right, right. So I have to find this balance. Find the balance, yes. So we do a lot of that work today. And what we do is we make sure that when students start school, mm -hmm. the way that our, our living cost payouts work for the loan mm -hmm. is we, we give $1,720. We deposit that into their account every month for one year. 
every month for one year. So exactly like the GIC products from CIBC okay. and, and other, other providers. Now, that means you have one income source, mm -hmm. at least 1,700, blah, 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 mm -hmm. coming in. We know most students end up getting at least part-time jobs, part jobs yes. to support themselves. Oh, right. At minimum wage in Ontario right now, and 24 hours per week, that's another $1,600 yes. coming into their account every month. All right. Yes. So now you have 1,700 plus 1,600. 1, you have 3,300-ish, 3, yes. you know, coming into your account as income. Uh -huh. Now, that means I know that you should be able to not only afford uh, loan repayments easily, you should be able to afford rent, uh -huh. your basic living expenses, and hopefully actually build up savings. Yes. Our goal is that students should actually be saving money in their first year. Okay. So that, God forbid, if anything happens to them while in Canada, they have some safety net. Safety net, okay. But also in their year two, they're focused more on their studies, okay. preparing for interviews, interviews, reaching out so they can get that first good first job, odd job, yes. rather than working all these different odd jobs to try mm -hmm. to get enough money for tuition mm -hmm. and rent. Okay. Right? Okay. And the, like, how will be the repayment uh, process will happen? Means uh, there will be a auto payment from a student's account to your account or how will be the repay, uh, repayment? Uh, uh, yeah, so is. in the first year, we are going to send out this $1,720 okay. per month. Okay. We're going to take the, the loan payment from that. So we just do it automatically. So like an automatic, oh, okay. uh, yeah. like a pad, we call it. You, are, you the, are settling down the transaction, right? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Okay. And for how many, uh, like how long the loan will last? Like it's like two years, yeah. three years or four years. So, so the base of the loan, we try to make sure that we can get the monthly payments as small as possible. Okay. So that if you pay the minimum amount, it takes seven years. You have seven years to make repayments. Okay. okay. But we specifically made as much flexibility as possible. Okay. This means if you have a sponsor back home mm -hmm. or in Canada, the US or somewhere else, or you just get a really good job when you're in Canada, you can fully repay the loan at any time and you can really control how much total you pay. Okay. Right? It will it, be any foreclosure charges? None whatsoever. Done. So we don't punish students to prepay early. Why? Okay. Because I can take it and fund the next student. Okay. Okay? Yeah. yeah. So what's important is you can really control how much total you're going to pay to passage. Okay. By repaying early. Early. Okay. Right. And how about the uh, processing fee? Are you charging any processing fee? No processing fee. No processing fee. Okay. Uh, because in... Uh, and can you tell me about... I think you are telling me everything good about the for the students yeah i have a suspicion i i think like i feel like you may be a charging like 20 percentage or 30 percentage of loan what is what the percentage you are charging the the interest rate is flat and fixed meaning you're not going to go halfway through the process and i'm going to say yes. surprise yes. it's actually this no it's 11.95 percent always flat yes it doesn't any, matter the interest rate, not like none of that is going to change it. It's always that. Means there will be any uh, economy condition or nothing. It's it's you can count on it. Eleven point nine five percent is what the interest rate will always be. Okay, so that means you we don't have to pay processing fee. Yep. We don't have to show any financial document, no civil score, nothing. The passage will give you funding on your skills only, on your profile. So I think that's like it's the yep. biggest philanthropist thing that passage is doing. I can say. Uh, it's changing the student life. So guys, I request everyone to please take uh, advantage of this particular product in a good manner because if you if you are successful and if you are paying back this loan uh, to Passage, they will fund another students. That means if you, even you are not going outside and doing charity work, but by paying a loan early or paying a installment on timely manner to Passage, yep. they will help more students. That's right. I think this is an amazing product for lots of students who are looking for the loan or uh, they don't have a sufficient fund. So I think uh, it's, it's, it's great and it's a life changing. And if you need any more information about the passage, reach out to me, reach out to Bobby. I will, uh, he, I will share his LinkedIn profile as well. Also contact information. Yeah. Uh, definitely you can reach out to any of us and we will definitely change your life. And if you, if you think you are really good, uh, if you think that no one is helping me, I don't have a money, but I have a talent and no one is helping me or funding me, then don't worry guys, Passage is there for you. Passage is the company will help you to create a better future in Canada. Thank you so much. Thank you, Bobby, for amazing podcast. Thank you so Thank much you. for giving a lots of insight. My yep. pleasure. My Thank pleasure. You. I hope it was helpful. Yeah, sure. Looking forward to talk to you in future. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Bye-bye.